doing this just uh, so I can put it online. Um, it's not like recording video or anything. Just. If you want to record this, it's fine. Okay. All right, that's good to know. <laughs> Everyone's here wearing. Uh, oh no, you're wearing the red one. So. All right, let me just adjust this. Speaker notes. Great. Okay, so thank you for taking the time out of your hackathon to come and listen to me speak on how to choose an open source license. This is a topic I feel is very uh, prevalent to hackathons because I assume most people here are working on something that is going to go someplace like GitHub or, or in a way that can be open source. So real quick, I should build myself just in time. Uh, so my name is Mike Miles and I work here at Genuine. My role is Senior Technical Solutions Manager, which is a long way of saying clients come to us, say they want something built, and I say, great, this is how you should do it. Uh, and then work with the other developers to actually build it and bring it to life. Uh, my background is with using open source technologies, uh, mainly like PHP, a Drupal framework, if you've heard of that, or Symfony. Uh, so I'm a big fan of open source technology, and it's what I do every day. At night, I run a podcast called Developing Up, which is focused on the non-technical side of being a developer. So everything everyone's doing this weekend is about writing code, and that's a big part of being a developer. But professionally, there's a lot more, uh, like how to work on teams, how to give reviews, how to ask your boss um, for vacation time, stuff like that. So we talk about the non-technical part of being a professional developer. It's great for if you're starting out your career, give them a listen. Anywhere you want to hear about me or know more about me, MikeMiles86 is my handle. So. Twitter and Google Plus, anywhere on the internet. All right, enough about me. What we're going to talk about today, I'm going to split this presentation into three, three perspectives. First is why to open source software. Why to use a license? Why? What's the value of doing that? Second is what are open source licenses? We're going to talk about what they are, what they mean, what they do to projects. And then finally, how do you choose the right open source so, uh, license for your project. And I put right in quotes there because it's not going to be the same answer for everybody. Now to caveat all of this, I am not a lawyer. Um, and why this is important because uh, inter, uh, uh, intellectual property is a big deal. Uh, and the licenses you choose for your projects have a big impact on that. So the information I'm going to give you, while it's very informative and helpful in choosing license, you, if you're ever in a legal dispute for software you write, you can't say, well, this one guy who I listened to at a hackathon once told me this. It's not going to fly. So I am not a lawyer. Okay. Helpful, a helpful developer to other developers. Now, the other important statement I want to make for this presentation to set us all up is that code, let me move my mouse, is ours. And I don't mean that because I'm a developer who writes code and I love staring out the algorithms I write. I mean it from a legal perspective. All the code you write is considered a creative work. It's the same thing as writing a book, as writing a song, as producing a painting. When you write code, it's a piece of artistic work that you own. And this is important to know because just like if you're to write a book, just write if you're to produce a song, you own the, what's known as the copyright on that. It's yours uh, to do with what you want. No one else can take it uh, without the, you know, you can then sue them for other things. Same thing with all the code you write. As soon as you write a line of code, if you put it on the internet or you, you use it anywhere, you are the copyright owner, you or your team, if you're working with a team. That means only you get to dictate how it's used, what it's used for, who can use it, uh, and who has access to it. And this is important to know because, well, because what is copyright? What does that mean? It, it basically actually really goes back to saying you have the right to, only you have the right to produce copies of your work and to distribute it. So in terms of software, what this means is that, let's say you have a piece of software you're writing. As soon as you write it, it's copy protected. You have the copyright. You are the sole owner, the sole person who can do something with this. So you have the right to say, person A and person B, you can use my code, work on your projects, do with it what you want. But person A can't then go and give your code to two other people. They don't have the copyright, only you do. So these two other people would have to come back to you. So copyright protects your legal right 
to control who distributes and alter your software. Now that's great, and it, it may be useful in some cases, but in other cases in the world today, it may not be useful. Because what copyright also does is provides limitations, such as if your code, when you write it, is intrinsically copyrighted, only you get to define how it's going to be used. So let's say our software that we wrote for the sake of this presentation is for GPS navigation for ships. Very cool thing to do. I actually have uh, a step brother-in-law who works on software like this. What if your software, though, could be applied to um, autonomous vehicles? What if it could be applied to autonomous rocket ships that land themselves, like SpaceX? If you're not thinking of these uses and you have copyright code, it's never going to be used to solve these problems. It's only going to be used for the one thing you're defining it for. Also, when your code is copyrighted, only you can create improvements to it. So again, we have our software that's for ship navigation. If someone comes along and says, oh, sorry. If you say, I want to make this better, I'm going to add like a GUI on top of it, you can do that. You can alter it, you can add to it. But if someone else were to come along and say, hey, I was using your software. I think this would be a great improvement to it. Can I give it to you? They really can't. And that's unfortunate, because yours is copyrighted. They wrote some code. Their code is copyrighted. There's this whole legal gray area where if you were to take their code, put it in your copyrighted code, who then owns the copyright? Legal disputes happen. It happens all the time, and it gets ugly. So really, only you can say improvements happen. With this idea of copyright and writing code and having it be copyrighted versus having it being open source, I always go back to the question that I think all developers we need to answer for ourselves is, why do we write software? Um, and when I was walking around today, I saw you have, by the bathrooms, this great poster about technology should be dot, dot, dot. People have been providing their ideas. And there are two things on there that I'm so excited to see written down. One is that it should be open to everyone, and it should improve the world. Those are great. Those are great insights, and I totally 100% believe it. Um, we write software to solve a problem. Right? That's what everyone's doing here today. They're, you came up with an idea because there's a problem in the world that you want to fix, you want to make better. We write software as developers to solve the world's problems. That's great, but we only have so much insight into the rest of the world and the problems that they have. So by open sourcing our software, what we do is make our software open to the world so it can help us solve its problems. So we can say, hey, here's something I produced to fix this thing, to make something cool. And if we open source it, the rest of the world can say, oh yeah, but here's how you can make it better so it works for me or works for these other groups of people. So it allows us to really build software that changes the world and opens it up to everybody. So now I want to talk a little bit about what open source means. There's this idea that open source means free. That's not true. Just because you open soft, source your software doesn't mean you have to give it away for free. You can still open source software and make money on it, off of it. If you want to do that, your, your company can use it to, make, to build things that then they sell. Tons of companies do this. What open source means is that it, it, it means inviting others to contribute to your work and improve upon it. But, and this is why I, we'll get into why you want to use open source license, you still have the control over how that gets done, who can alter it, and how they can do it, and protecting your intellectual property, which is the creative work of code you wrote. So I want to show what happens when we open source our software. We have our software for ship navigation. Right now, it's copyrighted by us. Say we get rid of that, we open source our code. Now what can happen is someone can take this, they can create what's known as a derivative. They can use ours as a base, change it around, and suddenly they can produce code for uh, autonomous vehicles. Someone else can come along, take our code base, alter it, and SpaceX can use it for their space navigation. Awesome. We have this one problem that we were trying to solve, but all of a sudden we're solving all these other problems for the world. Derivatives, which these are, they're alterations or extensions of a piece of software. Open sourcing our software also, improve, also invites improvements from other people into our software. So we open source. We have our GUI add-on. Someone comes along and says, know it? I can make your GPS navigation 10 times more precise. Here's the code to do it. Great. You can pull that in. 
you can apply it to your project. No problems there because you're open source. Someone else can come along and say, oh, here's another improvement. Someone else can say, here's another improvement. And all of a sudden, you're getting the world of developers offering their insight and experience to build on top of what you did to, to solve more problems. And it's, I love it. It's what I do every day. So you say, okay, great. I'm not going to copyright my code. I'm just going to put it out there and just say, hey, anyone can use it. And you can do that. That's called an unlicense. It's basically putting your code in the public domain. Nothing wrong with that, but it removes some protections on your code that you may want to keep. So why use an open source license instead of just putting it out there for the world to use? All right, we have our software. Let's say we abstract it. Let's just say we wrote a library for GPS navigation in general. We can take that open source piece, put it in a distribution, a bigger package of code, and we can copyright that distribution. It can be you know, a piece of software, like say operating system or, or, or another application. And we can sell that distribution for then ship navigation. Someone else takes our open source piece of GPS, they make a derivative, they put it into their autonomous vehicles. There's nothing wrong with that. That's great, right? We already went through that. But what if someone were to come along, create an alteration, put our code in a distribution for ship navigation? What if they start to compete directly with what we're doing? An open source license allows us to protect against this, because we can say, you can use a license, you can use our code under these conditions. One of them being, you can't go after my business. But you can use it for any other purpose you want. If you just put your code out there, unlicense it, you can't protect against that stuff. You can't protect your intellectual property uh, and some people may argue, you know, you, you, that's a good thing. You know, it, it promotes, con um, what's the word I want? Uh, not conflict. I don't know. It promotes uh, people to, like, compete against each other. Competition. Oh, man, that's the word I wanted. But you may want to put restriction around how your software is being used. You still want others to use it. That's why you choose an open source license. Open source license allows software to be freely used, modified, and shared while establishing guidelines. You get to set the guidelines on how it's going to be done. There are many, 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 many open source licenses out there. And it's, you can also write your own if you wanted to. I would not, never recommend doing that. Unless you're a lawyer. Who knows that stuff? That's great. Um, luckily, there's a, there's a group out there called the Open Source Initiative. They've been around since the 1960s. They're a nonprofit group, and all they do is evaluate licenses, open source licenses, and then approve or deny them and say, hey, yeah, this is good to use. Here are the protections it provides. This is how you can use it. Or they may say, no, no, this is an open source license. Here's what's wrong with it. Go fix it if you want us to adopt it. They've been around for a long time. They evaluate all the big licenses, and they know what they're doing. They have a bunch of criteria that they use to evaluate open source licenses. And I want to just hit on the four biggest pieces uh, that I think impact us day to day. First and foremost, an open source license has to be free to use. You can't write a license and say, this is open source, but pay me a royalty to use it. It doesn't work that way. If you write an open source license, it has to be free for someone else to use. Open source licenses must require a clause that, have, that provides access to the source code. So the open source license must say, anyone who takes this project must have access to the compiled and the uncompiled version of the code. Open source license must allow for the creation of altered works for derivatives. It must state that, hey, if someone's going, if you put this license on here, if you mark your code as open source, that means you're allowing other people to create derivatives of it. And one thing that all the open source licenses have in common, they do these things differently, these first three, among other criteria, but what they all pretty much do is guarantee that if anyone takes your code, they have to provide attribution back to you. So they have to say, I didn't create this, this really smart person did, I'm just using it. Now there are two main types of open source licenses. There's what's known as copyleft licenses, it's kind of a play on copyright, and derivative licenses, or sorry, permissive licenses. Derivatives are what you create. So copyleft and permissive. I want to break these down a little bit to explain the differences for you. So copyleft licenses work this way. You have your software, it's open source, you apply a copyleft open source license to it. 
someone creates a derivative of your work. Copy left licenses state that if someone creates a derivative of your work, they must apply the same exact license. It basically it says they must keep their version open source. Someone makes an alteration, an add-on that they want to contribute back to your project. <coughs> Copy left licenses say if you want to do that, that alteration has to use the same, same license. Right? It's, per it's perpetually promoting this idea of open source that I'm saying software can be used this way that I wrote. Anyone who uses it has to follow those guidelines. To some degree, copyleft licenses say if your code gets put into a package, a distribution, that package also has to use the same exact license. So it, the package itself has to be open source. Now, there are actually two types of copyleft licenses, weak and strong. Weak copyleft licenses protect for just these two scenarios, for derivatives and alterations. We can copy left just says, if you want to take my code, you want to make a change to it, great, you have to use the same license. I don't care if you take my code and put it in a, in a package that you want to then distribute and sell in closed source, fine, do that. Strong copy left covers all three scenarios and says, no matter how my code is being used, you must use the same exact license as me. So that's copy left. It basically states anything using your code has to follow the same license as you. Permissive licenses are a little more loosey-goosey. They're a step above pretty much having no license, for the most part. So let's say we have our, our code, we put a permissive license on it. Now if someone were to make an alteration, they can go ahead and apply a different license to their, their version. Now there's still some guidelines, like it has to be an open source, or depending on the permissive license you choose, it has to follow certain guidelines, but they could put a copy left license on it, they could uh, not even, they could copyright their version, there's stuff you can do. Same thing with an add-on. Right? They can create an add-on that has a compliant but different license, submit it back to you for, to add it to your project, or someone can take your code, make a distribution, close source it, put their copyright on it, and they can sell that. So permissive license say that Derivatives, additions, and distributions don't have to use the same exact license. They don't even have to use an open source license. But it's still a way, what all permissive licenses pretty much say is you have to provide attribution still. So it protects you so the world knows you created this amazing thing. All right, so there's permissive licenses, there's weak copy left, and strong copy left. Use open source licenses to open your software to the world so others can use it and benefit from it and improve upon it. But what type of open source license do you use for your project? I want to take you through, it's basically four, the only four questions you have to ask yourself to figure out what type of license to use. And I, I will hope that after this you're going to use that this weekend before you submit your final projects. First question, what licenses are already in use by my software? How many people here are working on projects where you're using a pre-built package or library that you're not creating yourself? Raise your hand. Everyone's writing it themselves. Everyone's writing their own JavaScript library language. No, everyone pretty much is. Like That's what we all do every day. If you're using something that's pre-built, say you're using Angular, say you're using uh, a Python package you found to connect to Spotify, say you're, using, you're integrating with an API um, for machine learning, check their licenses. Because they're going to have licenses on their software, because it's open source. That's how they opened it for you to use. They could have a strong copyleft license that says, your software, if you want to use us, has to use the same license as us. So that's going to dictate what type of license you may use. And if you don't agree with the licenses that software uses, you're going to have to find a different package, a different library. Second question is, what are the terms of service where my software is hosted? This is one thing that people don't really think about. Let me ask, how many people here are putting their project up on GitHub this weekend? All right, a number of hands, a couple of hands. Um, GitHub has, in its terms of service, a clause that states if you put your code on GitHub, you have to allow for the creation of derivatives. You have to allow for what's known as forking your project base. Now, they can be private forks, or they can be public forks, but you have to allow people to create derivative works. If you're already thinking about open sourcing, that's great for you. If you're like, I want to put my software up on GitHub and I don't want anyone to be able to touch it, it gets a little gray area. So there's other places where you host 
code. Like there's um, a thing called packages for uh, PHP libraries. There's you know npm. There's stuff like that. That they may have terms of service requests that say you have to use these sort of licenses. These first two questions are kind of like outside of your exact code. It's more about what you're using to power your software. The next question, though. It's directly that you control is, do you want derivatives, additions, and distributions to have to use the same license? If you say, yeah, I want, I want anyone who uses my software to follow the same guidelines I'm following, then you want a copy left license, right? We talked about that. If not, if you're like, no, I just want people to use this, but I want a, a couple small guidelines, and I want to make sure I get the credit for the work I did, you want a permissive license. If you do go with copy left, there's one other question to ask yourself, which is, can others use my software in their own proprietary software? Basically, do I care if people are going to use this to make money? If you don't, go with a weak copy left. So then you allow people to create their distributions that then they can sell and package your software into. If you do care, if you're like, no, 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 no. I don't want anyone to benefit from, well, not benefit, profit from my work. Strong copy left, so no matter how they use your software, they have to use the same license as you. These are the four questions you ask yourself to figure out what type of open source license you want. What else am I using that I didn't write? Where am I going to put this software? Uh, do I care what type of license people use? Do they want to follow the same one as me? And do I want to allow people to put it in proprietary software? That gives you kind of like a decision tree to figure out if you want weak copy left, strong copy left, or permissive. All right, Mike, that's great, but which license specifically? Tell me. We don't know. What, I want to know exactly what license to use. I, I can't tell you that. It's going to be different for every project, every team, every organization. You're going to have rules and guidelines and, and thoughts about how you want that software to be used. And like I said earlier, there are a lot of licenses out there. This is a, a couple of examples of the most common ones of these three categories. So strong copy left is the GPL license, the GNU public license, uh, written way, way, way back, back then. Or I was even born. Um, like Linux uses this, GNU uses it. They're very strong copy left. They say if you if you want to use Linux, you want to write a package for it, it pretty much has to be open source. Again, there are some things around that. Uh, the Eclipse, strong copy left license. We copy left, there's the LGPL, the lesser new public license, Mozilla's public license, and the permissive, it's like MIT and Apache 2.0. Yes? Yes, they are. So the question is, is copy left related to copyright? So uh, what you missed at the very beginning is when you write software without putting a license on it, you own the copyright to it. That means you are the only person who's allowed to distribute it. Copy left is a play on that word. It's like the opposite, where you're opening up your software so other people can use it and alter it. So that's my, what I know is the, the origin of that word. So I can't tell you which of these, or the one, even ones that aren't listed here, which ones to use. I can tell you should use OSI approved licenses, but I can give you guidelines on how to decide once you know what type of license to use, which one specifically works for your project. First and foremost, I just said it, only use licenses that are approved by the OSI, the Open Source Initiative. They, every day, all they're doing is reviewing licenses, making sure it protects the copy right owner or the creator of the work and the people who are going to use it. Make sure there's protections on both sides. No one's doing any crazy clauses that then like screws people over. Read the license before you use it. Now this can be hard because a lot of them are written in legalese and none of us here are lawyers. Uh, there's a really fun website called tldrlegal.com. Yeah, so they do things like terms of services for, for social networks, all the open source licenses, all other licenses. You go there. You look it up, and they put those licenses into basic English terms. They say, this provides these protections, allows for this creations of work, and these are the limitations. So you can quickly get a glance about, all right, this is what this license means. This is what it means for my project and for people using it. And the most important thing is, once you pick a license, do not change it. Now, this is for ver per version of your software. So if you produce, let's just say, version 1.0 of your our GPS software, we put it out there with a permissive license. 
goes out in the world, and suddenly you think, you know what, actually, I want to make this strong copy left. You cannot change the license on version one. You create version two with a different license, put that out there, that's fine. But the legal trouble starts if, as soon as you put software out there, you have to assume someone's already copied it. They've already made a change, they've already made an alteration. They've already forked it or made a distribution. Because if you were allowed, or if you changed your license, say we had version one, permissive, someone made a derivative, they put it in a package work that then they were selling for proprietary reasons, and we're like, no, we're gonna change it to strong copy left. Suddenly, you could like slyly try to sue that person, be like, oh, you're not following my license, but then they're gonna get back to you and be like, well, this was the license at the time, and it's all this crazy legal stuff. So, once you pick a license, stick with it until you switch to a newer version. Now, something that came up late, earlier last year with changing licenses, how many people here have used Angular? Or heard of Angular? All right, you've heard of it. It's owned by Facebook. And they had, um, uh, I think it was a permissive license uh, that basically said, hey, you can use the Angular library to your heart's content. But they had a clause in there, it was a modified BSD license that said, except you can't use it for anything uh, that would compete against Facebook, nor can you sue Facebook for any reason. People are like, whoa, 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 Facebook does a lot of things. And who knows, they have a lot of money, who knows what they're gonna do in the future. If I'm using Angular 2, and I can't sue Facebook in the future for any reason, that's not, that's no bueno. So people are start, starting to drop Angular, and Facebook was like, oh, there's a problem. They want people to use their stuff. So they created a new version of Angular with a different license. They got rid of that. Uh, patent clause, and the world is much happier. So to recap, open source projects change the world. I totally believe that. Everyone here, I bet, is working on something that they would hope would change the world. I strongly recommend you open source your projects, especially because it's a hackathon. You're not going to build something perfect in 40 hours. You may get close, uh, but you want others to contribute and make it better. Adding an open source license to your project invites other people to do that, to make your work better, to alter it, to use it, to benefit the world, to share and modify it. So think about applying an open source license to your project this weekend. And no one can tell you the best license for your project. Maybe a lawyer can who knows intellectual property and software law. But select the right project, sorry, select the right license for your project by asking yourselves the right questions. Do I want other people to have to follow the same guidelines as me? Do I care if they're going to make money off of this by putting in distribution? Where am I being hosted? What other libraries am I using that put restrictions? Those lead you down the path to know if you should do strong copy left, big copy left, or permissive. So before I get into questions, I'm going to list some resources for you, everyone here. The first is a Bitly link, Hack Dean OSL, which is this presentation. It's on Google Slides. So I, I don't have it listed, but it's like an open source thing because you can create a copy of it. So it's an open source presentation. Uh, the link to opensource.org, which is the open source initiative, who they read all those licenses and approve or deny them. Choosalicense.com is a fun tool by GitHub. Ask you basically those four questions I asked you or I presented to you. And they help you decide what license to pick. They get a little more explicit and be like, hey, the Apache license may be the best fit for your needs. TLDRlegal.com, turn all that legalese into English so you can understand it. Uh, and then just a link to my podcast, again, developingup.com, if you want to start thinking about things that aren't code-related but have to do with a career in development. So with that, any questions? Well, if you have, all right, no hands yet. But if you have questions later, I'm on Twitter at MikeMiles86. I'll be around here till probably like 3 o'clock, so for another hour. If you have questions about licensing, um, I can give you my non-legal advice. <laughs> um, and uh, it's always fun to have applause. <laughs> so I got unless anyone has any questions. Question. Back. So if you do not put any license on your project, what that means is that you own the copyright to that project. So anyone else looking at your code, if there's no license to it, if they are paying attention, they're going to assume I can't use this code because it's copyrighted. 
So that's, that's the right you have for creating a piece of creative work, is that you create it, you put it out there, you own the copyright. Just like if you're to write uh, a song and put it on the internet, you own the copyright to that song. Right? So if you don't apply a license, the license that automatically gets applied is a copyright license. Yes? I'm just curious about how this, like, how do you deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis? So is this, like, you just have to work through thinking about a license when you're starting a project or something? Or is that, like, yeah. something that is thought about until it's shipped through? <laughs> so the question is, you know, how do you think about this every day when you're doing a project? Yeah, and so like, also, like, what's your responsibility versus, like, like the legal? Attorney? Yeah, so it's, it's a little mixed. I think as a developer, it is your responsibility to know what you're using and what the implications of what you're building. Because if you're building something uh, with a license and you're not following those guidelines, I mean, you're responsible for doing that. True, there are lawyers who can, can stop you. Like, if you... Let's say you own a company and you're, you're producing software that you put out to the world. You're going to have a legal team who's going to help you review explicitly what sort of licenses to use. Here at Genuine, where we build work for clients, we use a number of different pieces of software and technologies. I'm on the PHP team. We use open source software. Uh, the framework we use the most has, uh, I believe it's an LGPL license, which states you can use this. You don't have to follow the same license as us, though. So that allows us to then let our clients, they technically own the code because they pay for it to be written. So then they can do with what they want. They can open source or close source it. Other teams, like on our .NET team, well, Sitecore is kind of open source, but they have licenses where you have to buy access to the code. Right? So well, clients may want that. On top that. of that, we then have our own internal frameworks that are open source. Right. So they allow, make sure. So we basically, yes, you need to talk. If you work for a company, they need to have a talk with a lawyer to be like, how do we want to do this? You need to kind of standardize on the tools you use so you don't have to figure that out for every project. That help? I hope. <laughs> All right. Good question. Yes? In the back. Uh, for a strong copyleft license, you can't profit off the software for say if you transform it, derive it, but can you profit off of the output of that? Is there any restrictions on that? So what the code produces? Yes. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think it restricts that. I think like you can use all this free, you know, or this copyleft software to then produce something and sell what's produced. Um, I would assume that's the case because you're assembling these pieces in a certain way that you're producing something. I don't know if you'd be considered creative, but that's unique. So yeah, you could probably sell what's produced. Just the the code you use to write that, you can't say like, oh, this is our. You can't sell the code you write. Yeah. You create it. I don't know where that would get in if you used. Strong copy left code to generate code. I don't know what how would happen there. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Uh, so probably. All right, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Double applause. Yeah.